Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome guys. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the difference between knowledge and belief and how the TS and the ATS usually confuse themselves when they engage in a dialogue or a discussion where they will start using I know. Do you really know or you just believe? And is there anything wrong in believing? Those are some of the things we'll be getting into. And uh, to give you some background of why I'm making this video, a couple of days ago, I released a video where I showed the debates that happened between a Christian presuppos uh, presuppositionist apologist and an atheist, Matt Delaunty. And then in the comment section, and even during the debate, they kept on using the term, I know. I know that this is the case. And both of them disagree on what the issue is. So I realized that. And at one point in the debate, Matt, the atheist, asked this question, what do you mean by no? So the Christian asked him that, you claim that this is the case? How do you know? Do you know this? And then he said, what do you mean by no? That's when you would realize that. When we say the terms like I know, it's probably just a belief. It's a belief, okay? And is there anything wrong with believing? Aren't T.S. believers? Like, people make it seem like uh, there's a problem with believing. But when you realize that, maybe all the knowledge that we could have is they are all beliefs. Okay, so then everything starts to make sense when people so they will ask for things like evidence. What is the evidence for your belief? I'm going to show you what evidence can you provide for your belief, and what are the evidence for knowledge? Two distinctions. Okay, so let's get into the video. The first thing is knowledge and belief. What are the things that we can claim as knowledge? You see, knowledge. That if you say that you know something, is it that you are saying I'm convinced by it, which means it's a belief? Or is a, is a necessity, is a necessary, uh, logically necessary thing, okay? A claim, like 1 plus 1 equals to 2, for instance. You don't say, I know that 1 plus 1 equals to 2. You just merely state it, even. You just say, 1 plus 1 equals to 2. We know that, okay? But, or bachelors, for instance, analytic statements, like bachelors are unmarried. You don't need to go into the world and look for evidence for bachelors that are married because it's in the de definition itself, okay? So... When we say we know, we need to be very careful because it could be a very strict notion of knowledge that we're talking about or a very general use of knowledge where beliefs fall into that, how strongly you are convinced by an idea can fall into that. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to go into more details well, just for now. Okay, so this is knowledge and these are beliefs. Another thing you will notice about knowledge is that it's fixed. It doesn't change. Okay, so take the correspondence theory of truth. If something is true, whether you, whatever disposition you have towards it, it can never change it. So, take for instance, the the tears claim to believe in the, you see, claim to believe, believe. I don't know why this is so difficult, but I'm going to establish it much more deeply. Why you'll be much more comfortable with beliefs, and I can show you how you can believe, no matter what you can believe. You don't need to know. You can believe, and that's what everyone does. They believe eventually. Okay. So the tears claims a creator God and an afterlife. So whatever you think about the issue, let's say one person says, this is true, that there's a creator God, and the other person says, it is not true. The reality itself, whatever you said, it doesn't change it. So if me, I say, I don't believe there's a, there's a God, and the other person says, I believe there's a God. It do, both of their beliefs does not change the reality. If there's actually a God, whether you believe it or not, the God will be there. <laughs> you get it. I remember I used an analogy of the lion being outside. If there's a lion outside and I told you there's a lion outside and you say, I don't believe it. And you go outside just just because you've, you haven't seen it. So you say, ah, I, I, I've not seen it. And uh, I know that there's no lion outside. If you go outside, the lion is there waiting for you. Then you don't know anymore. You see, knowledge is fixed. Beliefs change. If you truly know something, it can never change. It's impossible because knowledge is necessity. If you know something necessarily, you cannot then unknow it. You cannot be wrong. But if it's a belief, then you can be wrong. It could be that tomorrow, it could be that there's a lion outside. It could be that there's a creator God, eventually, because our beliefs does not change it. So my point in this video is to show you that both the tears and the atheists, they both believe, they don't know. They believe. And that's why they differ. The tears, even in themselves, they differ. And all of them claim knowledge and truth. is because it's belief. Different levels of conviction. That's why belief, it can go up and even come down. You can increase your belief and it can go down. Even during, in one day, in one day, in the morning, you could be listening to a, a sermon and your belief go up. And in the night, you're listening to some atheist dude and then it goes down. See, this is not knowledge. Knowledge can never change. It's certainty. You're certain, absolutely certain. You can never be wrong. This is knowledge. But belief, it can change. Okay, so uh, 
believe in the creator God and the belief in an afterlife. Imagine someone says, there is no afterlife. The question is that it cannot justify that position, the atheist. If you say that I know there's no afterlife, your, your, your position is, it doesn't make sense. Everyone knows that, by the way. So what the atheist usually says is that, uh, you cannot prove it to me that there's an afterlife, so I'm justified in not believing it. Justifiable belief, that's what it's all about, beliefs. So if there's an afterlife, whether the atheists believe it or not, is there. Do you get it now? What I'm saying is not about, I'm not talking about truth yet. I'm talking about the discussion, the dialogue that we're having. The atheists will sneak in knowledge in there as if he knows something, certainly. Whereas all, of, all his worldview is just beliefs. And the tears as well will sneak in knowledge to, make, to say that I know. Whereas he doesn't actually know, it's a belief. Okay, so uh, that's what I'm trying to show here. So the difference between saying I know something and saying I believe something. When you are talking about beliefs, they can change. That's why one guy is, is, a, is a tears today, a Christian, and tomorrow is an atheist. And he can even come back again. Knowledge does not work like that. You don't want they say, you know what, bachelors are, uh, what's it called, are unmarried. And then tomorrow you say bachelors are married. And then it doesn't work. Okay. Anyway, so beliefs, they increase, they decrease, they change. Degrees of conviction, that's what I call it. All of your knowledge claims, even you right now, whoever you are, tears or atheists, all of the things that you claim to know, they are by degrees of, of a conviction. How convinced you are of it. So you endorse it. You say, I trust that. I believe in that. I think that's the case. Okay. So take for instance, uh, let me see. If I if you say something like that, for instance, I am coming tomorrow. If I told you that I'm, I am coming tomorrow, do you know that I am coming tomorrow or that I will be there tomorrow? What if I don't show up? Oh, you don't know anymore. Because it's a belief. You believe, you trust me or what I said. And even I, that I'm saying that I'm coming tomorrow, do I know it? What if something happens? I don't know what the future will be. So we have things in the future. So things of the future that we've not seen before. We cannot make a necessary knowledge claim about them. We cannot have a belief about them. And this is exactly what David Hume said. If you've read Hume, that how do you go from the past to the future? Necessarily, logically necessarily. You cannot. It has to be on faith and hope. So induction, the principle of cause and effect, the principle of uh, causation, and all those things, they are based on you having hope that the past will behave like the, the future will behave like the past or something like that. Anyway, so I've covered that. So another thing is, aren't, aren't we believers? Like, don't we literally tell you that we are believers? So why are you so surprised that we have beliefs? So some, some atheists will say, you know what, these are just mere beliefs. Bro, it's a belief. <laughs> of course it's a belief. What do you mean by uh, this is just belief? Show me something irrefutable, necessary. And when the a smart tears that is well read, can then show you too that you have no such uh, knowledge, no such knowledge of necessary, irrefutable knowledge claims. You have the, you don't have it. That's why in philosophy, the standard position is justifiable true belief. That's the standard position most people take. No one takes the position of absolute certainty. Even about things like material world. Does the material world exist? Bishop Berkeley literally called the materialist, uh, what's it called, dogmatist. He literally did that. So guys, let me check some. Okay, the video is still going on. Bishop Berkeley, who is an idealist. So the question of, is there external world out there or is just in our head? Do you know that? Or you just believe there's an external world? In fact, Bishop Berkeley called it superstition. That whoever believes in this is a superstitious belief because he was, an, he was a hardcore empiricist. Anyway, let's not go too far into that. Now, where should we go next? Okay, so I wrote here, certainty is greater than conviction. It's true. If something is absolutely certain and it's true, Maybe we don't know that, but certainty, once you reach certain certainty, it cannot change. It's not possible for you to change. It's irrefutable, it's necessary. Conviction, however, we also have different levels of conviction. When I say different levels, it means there are some things like, for instance, that I believe that I exist, that I believe that there's an external world, that I believe that there are other people. Those kind of things are beliefs, but they are much more stronger than just making a claim. So I said experience, when you experience something directly, like I was there yesterday when he said it, no one told me. It's not like someone told me I was there. That is much more stronger than I believe he said this. If you were there, okay, fine. That's a greater, you have a stronger belief, but it doesn't mean someone that wasn't there cannot believe it. He can believe it. Based on trust, based on being convinced by the argument. And so experience is greater than belief, is greater than claim. Okay, fine. But they are all beliefs anyway. You, you didn't get to certainty yet. Just because you are very convinced by something, it cannot guarantee certainty, okay? You get it anyway so when you ask for when you ask for evidence of my belief i can provide you some reasons 
but it can never guarantee that you will accept it or you'll be convinced by it. Let me look at the camera. Listen to this. When an atheist asks for what is the evidence for your belief, whatever evidence you give him can never guarantee that he will believe or that he will accept it because it's about conviction. Some are convinced, some are not. It's just that maybe you, you haven't thought it through and you claim to know things that you don't know. Okay? Then, because if you say you know, people can just question you and you will not be able to prove it other than making the claim. So, belief is a much more better term and that's what actually believers believe. That's why they are believers. But the atheist, the Emi doesn't want to be a believer. This is another issue. The atheist doesn't want to be a believer. He wants to be someone that knows and this is the issue. He will make the, uh, the tears look like the believer, where he, whereas him, he doesn't believe. But actually, in reality, he does believe as well. Do you get it? Anyway, so what else should I talk about here? Mm, I've, I've covered that, I've covered this. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the main point of tears. They believe in the creator God. So both of us, wait, wait a moment, guys. Okay, let's continue. So both of us, we went to the beginning of the universe. We went to the beginning of the universe. And or we just find we found ourselves here and we asked the question, do you think we, we exist on ourselves or we were created by a God? The first person says, you know what? I, think, I don't think we need a God. I don't think there's a God. I have not seen a God. But the question is not about, have you seen God? It's about questioning about your existence. Our existence, does it have an explanation? Some people will stop at it that, you know what? We don't need to look for any further explanation. This is what we, this, we exist on ourselves. The universe exists on its own. Where are some people who say, they must have been a creator. I believe that. It's about belief. If I tell you this claim, what is the evidence I'll provide for you other than I'm convinced that there has to be a creator God? Do you see? So that is the first one. And the claim about afterlife is much more succinct, in my opinion. The claim about afterlife is a claim about a future event. So if you deny it, you don't believe in it. It doesn't make it untrue. Understand that and many of the arguments will disappear. I guarantee you, if you understand what I just said, that truth doesn't care whether you agree with it or not. Whether you believe it or not, truth doesn't care. You don't create truth in your mind. Truth is true, whether you believe it or not. Whether you claim to know it or not. So when people say they know, they're actually claiming to know. So I can claim to know this. The other person can claim to not, uh, you can say, I don't know, okay? But now, I know the atheists. They will come back with saying things like, uh, what's it called? Mm, the person, the body of proof. They will start talking about the body of proof. You see body of proof? It only works when you are in a dialogue and it doesn't affect the reality also. So, okay, you say, the person that claims that there's something will happen tomorrow is the one that should prove it. Okay, let's, let's use this example to destroy this notion of body of proof nonsense. Remember, if I want to really convince you, I can worry about being the one with the body of proof, but logically, it doesn't mean anything. This point, I mean. The thing about body of proof is this. It's just to win an argument. The burden of proof thing is to say, maybe you are using an imperialist mechanism of, if I don't see the thing, I don't believe it. Seeing is believing. If you don't show me the thing, I am justified in not believing it. So it's, it's back down to belief. Whether the burden of proof is on me or is on you, or we throw it around and throw it somewhere, it doesn't change reality, okay? So I hope you get that. Another thing is like, for instance, do you believe, do you know that we shouldn't kill innocent people? Do you know that we shouldn't kill innocent people? Or you believe it? How does someone know that we shouldn't kill innocent people? It's not a self-evident fact. It's something you believe in and you attach yourself to it by degree of conviction that I strongly believe we shouldn't kill innocent people. So moral claims, there are many things that don't have material evidence that you believe in. You, principle of induction, all those many other things, claims about the past history. These are things you believe in, you have no material evidence, other than claims that will just uh, go to an infinite regress. Anyway, I hope this video is clear. Uh, I will talk about evidence in another video, much more broadly. Like, what is evidence? I will show you how, if people like Aristotle lived in our times, they would have thought that people were dumb because they only ask for material evidence when there are many other evidence. In fact, your life will be meaningless without belief. How about that? Any belief whatsoever. If you want to eliminate all beliefs, your life will be meaningless. So, all of us are believers, like Hume said. <laughs> Funny enough. So, anyway, uh, let me see. I think that's all. That's about all. Let me see what you guys think in the comment section. See you guys later. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.